Hello everyone, in this video we're going to continue with optionals and we're going to explore the different ways to unwrap it. Let's get started. My name is Pete and this, this is Swift & Tips. We will do what we normally called unwrapping an optional. Let's bring x and y variables and assign 500. The first way is by just using if. It's simple, we check if x is not nil and do something. But there is a problem with this approach. The actual value of x is still in the box. You will have to carry around with it all the time. And if you want to make operations with it, Swift will complain a lot. There is something more sophisticated. Let's use optional binding. There are three forms of optional binding. The first one is using if. Here, instead of a regular bool conditional, we're actually trying to assign the wrap value from an optional to a temporary variable. Swift so allowed to use the same name for this variable because we are creating an internal scope inside the if. If there is a value in the optional, we create the temporary x and this x is actually a regular int, which is cool and we can do whatever we want. Otherwise, that means the optional x is not having a value and we execute the else branch. Just be careful here, because your code could become a Python of doom. This makes the code harder to read and to maintain. The most nested if is coupled to the other two and this is really problematic for a large code base. There is a second way to do optional binding using guard. With guard, we can keep everything in the same scope and also validate if or value is nil, returning immediately. Definitely, this is way better because we can return sooner and also throw errors, very easy. And the last way to do optional binding is with switch. We saw earlier that optional is actually an enum. We can use a switch and generate actions depending of none or some case. In this last case, getting the associated value, that is the value contained in the optional. Very nice. Any type in Swift can be an optional, even functions. Here we have a completion handler or a closure. We execute whatever is there. You might notice the question mark before the parentheses. This is required to identify this function as an optional. And if it's nil, nothing will be executed. No crashes, no nothing. It just won't do anything. In the first call, we sent a print hello in the completion, but in the second one, we just passed nil. We can even validate if our closure is nil too. There is also a concept called optional chaining that is just executing a chain or operators or functions separated by dots. One cool thing about optionals is that you could execute a method coming from a nil object. It won't crash your app or anything. Simple, it won't be executed. Let's see this example. Y received nil because we tried to cast a string hello as int, and that doesn't make sense at all. That means if we execute operations over Y, once we find an optional in this change, nothing else will be executed and we return a nil for the whole expression. Also, there is one cool operator called nil coalescing. If we want to assign or do something with the value that might be nil, we can send a default value to prevent sending an optional. 
for example here, y is nil, and in this case the print function will take the right value, no value, that works, has the default value. Now look this other case. A is optional, but it has a value. If we check the type of B, we will see that it's a regular int, not optional. Nil coalescing operator will try to unwrap the optional. If it's valid, will return that value. Otherwise, it will take the default one. This is cool because no matter the case, it's guaranteed that B will have a value. Believe me, you will see this operator a lot in Swift. Finally, let's talk about the favorite feature for all Swift developers, force unwrapping. So far, we have seen that we are carrying around with the optional type and we use optional binding to gently unwrap the object and get the value inside. But there is another way to get the contained value in an optional. We can use exclamation operator to force the unwrapping. Immediately, we just got the value of x. This operator is super convenient if we want to quickly access the wrap value without much complications. But you need to be very careful here. What if we try to get x value and we already know it's nil? Well, we will get a boom. That's right, your wrap will crash. There are people in the community saying that force unwrapping is a bad practice, and it's the devil. I'm not agree 100%. Yeah, it's a terrible practice forcing the unwrapping just because you were so lazy to think in the consequences. Not only this will crash your app, it will make your app super unstable, and maybe reject it from App Store if you don't take care. But this is a tool, you must need to understand where to use it. For example, this is great for testing when you are 100% sure a value will be there because you declare it. Use it carefully. And if you use it, please, you need to be 100% sure your value will be there. Otherwise, use optionals and optional binding to get the values safely. And last but not least, we need to talk about implicit unwrap optionals. If you cannot initialize your object at the beginning, but you are 100% sure that when we access it, it will be ready with a value, then you can use this. Looks like a regular optional, right? What if we assign nil and print it? Will it crash? No, it's not crashing. This type of optionals are automatically unwrap for you if it's necessary. In the previous example, the unwrapping wasn't necessary. Let's see now this example. Is multiple is a boolean, not an optional boolean, because here z was unwrapped without optional binding and you didn't even have to add the question mark after c either. But again, if c is nil, you will get a crash. You maybe have already seen this type of optional if you are using storyboards in UIKit with IB outlets. Personally, I don't use this kind of optionals because Feel them risky and not explicit if a variable is optional or not. But again, it's another tool that Swift provides for us. Use it carefully. What do you think about force unwrapping? Do you think it's something cool or something that we should remove from the language? Please let me know in the comments below. I would like to hear your thoughts. Also, if you want to learn about generics in Swift, check out this video here. Or if you want to learn how to build animations like the Apple Watch Home, check out this video in which we involve Geometry Reader and some math to do that. That's all for me. Thank you so much and have a great day.